when it comes to the FCS championship game, 2022, it's going to kick off with a bang. Let me tell you. The number eight seeded Montana State Bobcats will go up against the number two seeded North Dakota State Bison. And in this championship game, it's going to be a war of attrition. In the cold, in Frisco, Texas. Yes, it's going to be cold. Yeah, I, li I live here. I live in the DFW area, so I know it's going to be cold. It was cold today here. So it's going to be a long week ahead for those traveling from up north. But they know they know, they know the cold well. They know the cold well. They, they live in the cold. I mean, you know, Montana and North Dakota, those are two areas of the country that are probably colder than this right now. But there are plans in place. There are some plans in place when it comes to Corona Chan. Oh yes, her fearsome wrath has devastated college basketball, devastated the NBA, it's gotten to the NFL, it's gotten to college football as well. And her deadly, deadly path, you know, allowed the NCAA to say, we have some we have a little bit of a proposition here. We have a little bit of a proposition that can be done if things go wrong here. So the plan Potentially, if there is an outbreak, 53 eligible players can go on down to Frisco. That's the minimum. That's the minimum or maximum that they need, that these two teams will need to go down in case of an outbreak. You know, because, again, there's like 60-something scholarships, you know, for FCS. So, you know, and there's like 80 players on a team, you know, sometimes these scholarships are split in half and stuff like that. So, you know. If there's a problem that there's like 20 or so guys that, you know, are out, 53 will go down to Frisco for each team. And if that can't happen, um, January 14th is the alternate date that this game can be played. That is a Friday, unfortunately. I don't know why. Ugh. Um, but whatever, man. I mean, I, 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 can, I, can, I can do that. But if not, then if there's an outbreak... If one team is healthy, but the other isn't, or if both teams are not healthy, there could either be no champion, or somebody could just get awarded the championship by virtue of the other team technically forfeiting, even though they didn't want to forfeit, but I rest my case on that. So, that that's the, that's the first thing. The COVID plans are in place. They will continue to be in place. I'm sure there's things that are rapidly evolving as we come closer to the national championship in the FCS. So, what is Brent Biggin and the Bobcats going to do? What are they going to do? We know there is a storyline here for Mr. Biggin, the first-time head coach. You know, He was the former offensive coordinator for the Bison at one time. He was a three-time champion while he was there. But he's not there anymore. He's at Montana State. And can he lead the Bobcats to their first title since 1984? And for Matt Entz, can he continue the dominance for the Bison? You know, there's been a couple of years that have been some outliers, but the two teams that won championships in place of the Bison are moving up. They're moving on up to the FBS. So can the Bison, can they win nine out of their last 11? Or will it be 8 out of their last 11? Meaning they lose in this game. We will see. We will see. For the Bobcats of Montana State, Tommy Mallott's magical postseason, can it continue to be the way it has been? I mean, this man has been all over the field, running, passing, catching. He could do it all. He could probably block for you. He, he's had... The most unexpected postseason I think I've seen in quite some time. The only other guy that has that comparison is Cardell Jones. Back in 2014, the first college football playoff in the FBS. So this type of season, at least in my recent memory, I don't know about y'all, but I know in my recent memory, that's the only other guy that I know of that's had a magical, you know, type of thing. But even then, you know, Cardell Jones wasn't much of a factor. You know as Tommy Mallott was he's got he's got plenty of guys he's got plenty of guys on offense that are ready to go he's got plenty of guys like Lance McCutcheon potentially Isaiah Fonse again there's been injuries all over the place for both teams so you know both teams are looking 
to get it done, get it done when it comes to, you know, offense. You know, you know, there's other guys as well for the Bobcats offense. They got a pretty damn good offensive line. They can, the Bobcats can run, they can throw, they can do whatever they want, and they got a they got a pretty damn good defense as well. We all know about Troy Anderson. We all know about Ty Okada, and maybe Chase Benson as well. And also Daniel Hardy. You know, this is a damn good Bobcats defense that was able to stifle the two teams that played in the last national championship game back in the spring. They were able to beat South Dakota State. They were able to beat Sam Houston. They were able to beat the OVC champions, UT Martin. They were able to do that by being physical on defense and having an offense that can run it up. They can run it up and play with you. And they can they can be lethal when it comes down to it. When it comes down to it, you know, a lethal, lethal combination. And for the Bison, will Hunter Lepke continue to be an impact player? Will he continue to be the guy that has done, you know, so much blocking and running and catching this postseason? As we know, this Bison team can roll with it. They can roll with it. They also have guys like Tameric Williams. Again, the Bison really leans on their running game. Their running attack is a... It's pretty dynamic. That's why they haven't been able to use Cam Miller as much. You know, so, you know, Cam Miller might not be as much of an X factor in this game as people think. You know, is Christian Watson going to be able to go? I don't know. I really don't know. But there's guys on defense like Braden Thomas, Eli Moster, Michael Tootsie, Jackson Hankey. I mean, this is, this is a bison defense that can go at a team. They can really really be disruptive on defense. They beat East Tennessee State, the big the champions of the SoCon, Southern Illinois, and James Madison, you know, the team that is going to move up next year in their path to reach a championship. So we and we know this Bison team is experienced coming to the championship. We know that. We know that for sure. So really it's just a matter of who will win this game. And I gotta be honest with you, this is a pound for pound heavyweight fight that is gonna go down to the wire, I think. My personal opinion, I don't, I don't really I don't really pick, you know, winners of these games. I don't really pick. But I will today. And I will say that the bison are going to win their ninth national championship. In the last 11 years. I know, I know, I know. Usually I don't pick games, but I'm going to do it for this one. I'm going to do it for the next game we'll be talking about in a few hours or so, technically. So, the Bison, if they do win this game, 9 in 11 years. For the Bobcats, they win this game. First title since 84. Let's see if we can get it done. But with that being said, everybody, I'm going to get on up out of here. I'm going to skedaddle and talk another national championship in a moment here. So wait around. Or just wait around for a little bit. And we'll come on right back with you shortly. Until then, take care. I'll see you later. <laughs>